hello, hello. Hi, great to talk to you. Um, so I guess I wanted to start really. I think the one thing I was most entranced with with this film was your character Edwina Mountbatten is the classic example of a woman who was just born in the wrong time, who has mm. all this intelligence and wit and drive and passion. And because of her gender, she's kind of regulated to being a socialite and a mm. wife uh, until she comes to India mm. and she's able to do much more mm. with her life. Um, and I, I thought this was fascinating, you portraying this character alongside you co-writing this book on feminism mm. that you have coming out soon. Mm. I was wondering if you could talk about how maybe one informed the other. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if one informed the other, but I do think that I have a tendency towards playing uh, or at least spending time with characters that are um, ultimately uh, feminist. I, I like a a strong female character. It's and, a cliche. Uh, and, um, and she is very complex. And, you know, her... Um, her commitment to helping other people, to being of service and to making a difference and to pushing uh, beyond the boundaries of her um, uh, um, uh, female expectations started um, prior to going to India and um, started when she, when the war um, broke and she started working for the ambulance services and uh, trying to improve the um, uh, the quality for the nurses and et cetera, et cetera. So um, she did, uh, even before that, um, apply herself in a way that um, had impact and um, was uh, effective and proactive. And I think that I, um, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm also drawn to women who are self-destructive. So I, I um, uh, there's a, a a bizarre mix of the two in what I've done, but um, but certainly that was an element of of my interest in her, and I, I think lesser um, uh, on purpose and more just because that's the nature of who I am and what interests me. Absolutely. Um, and uh, the timing for me seeing this movie was very strange because mm. um, the press screening was a couple of days after the Muslim ban uh, was mm. announced. Mm. And, it, um, and I'm sure, you know, w when you were filming it, I think it was 2015, 2016, mm -hmm. you yep. filming it, um, it must have felt like, oh, this is a, a universal story about love and partition and mm. everything. But just seeing the film days after with this, this mm. huge injustice was being carried out and, and it was being exploited for the good mm. of, of people in power as well, which is yes. kind of the lesson of Viceroy's House. Yeah. Um, do you have any reflections based on like how you felt about the film when you were making it as opposed to it coming out in this current climate? Well, I, I think that potentially it was a very different feeling for uh, maybe Gorinda and other people who were involved in the film and who um, have been impacted by the decisions that were made 70 years ago because they... Um, they, you know, that have they impacted generations and continue to have an influence. And so, even though for some of us it feels like that is a a separate little bit of history that we can stand back and observe and learn about and be educated about, for many people, hundreds of millions of people, it is a, you know an interwoven part of their of um, of their life, their past and their future. And so, um, yes. It is now incredibly topical because of people in power and because it's very obvious that the politics of division and fear are still alive and well and that we don't seem to be learning from the mistakes that we see in this film. Um, but I think that those um, lessons and the need for those lessons were um, as valid, important, uh, uh, pertinent while we were shooting a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, 70 years before we were shooting and just we are now paying attention. One thing I noticed is that there is this huge criticism always um, from people in the film community that a lot of British export films are costume dramas, which are great and do it excellently abroad, but a lot of the time they don't have any roles written for any actors of colour whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And this is a brilliant example of like, look, you know, it's acknowledging the, yes, it's set in India, but like, you know, 
Asian people, African people, they helped build this empire that we mm. all have such a strong idea of in these mm. films, and they're more often than not invisible in these films. Mm. Um, was that? A f- I, I know you do a lot of work with indigenous people mm. and that kind of thing. Um, was that something that struck you when you were making the film? Uh, it, yes, it definitely did stri- strike me, and and a big part of what struck me in what Gorinda was attempting to do in the script was, I really loved the idea that at the very very beginning of the film. We, we get a sense of the human beings on the ground in you know what we see them in the basement as the servants in the you know we get to um, meet them and appreciate them for their human beings and their humanity and uh, and it's not until we get further into the film that we actually see that they are you know listening in on these, immense decisions and political conversations upstairs and because we're already locked into them that juxtaposition and seeing it all of a sudden jumping back and seeing it you know across the um the very very important white men to the um the local indians i I thought that was a really really um beautiful and effective device and uh, was interested to see how that would play out on film